Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you guys how to create a virtual equivalent of your local machine in VMware and deploy it on a Synology NAS. Today I'm going to talk you through the steps on how to create a clone, uh, a virtual clone of your physical PC, convert it into an image format and therefore upload it and unpack it within the Synology Virtual Machine Manager. So I've done this a few times using different file formats and different VM operators. And I want to talk about VMware today because it's probably one of the most well known, particularly in business. Now there's lots of things you're going to need for today's video. First and foremost, you are going to need a tool for your client machine. So download the VMware Center standalone converter from VMware's own website and have that downloaded and ready to execute here in the background. After that, you have to make sure you've got the right kind of NAS. We want to make sure you're using a Synology NAS that conforms to the following criteria. First and foremost, it has to be an Intel powered NAS, preferably a four core NAS or greater. And it has to be a NAS that's at least a Celeron or above. I would recommend more than that, maybe a Pentium, but just for the sake of balance, I am using a Celeron based NAS today. I'm using a DS1019 Plus, which is a quad core Intel Celeron J3455 processor, and that is an x86 64 bit processor. And I've also got four gig of memory and I'm going to be utilizing at least two but I would strongly recommend at least having four gig of memory when running a virtual equivalent of another machine and indeed if the machine you're cloning has got even more than that try to scale the amount of memory that you're going to utilize within your virtual machine in accordance with the PC you're going to be utilizing. Now if we look at the PC that I'm going to be using today we can have a look at the computer and we look at my system properties and we can have a look that this is an i7 based processor with 16 gig of memory. So this is quite a powerful version of Windows in a computer that I am utilizing today, but it will still be deployable as a virtual machine on this Synology NAS. It will just not perform anywhere near as well. So it is recommended that you use a Synology NAS of the same hardware capabilities as the physical machine that you are going to be emulating in this virtual form. So once you've downloaded the virtual machine vCenter tool, you want to uh, go to the downloaded file and just unpack it and install it like you would any other app. You're going to need to have the application here in front of you and have ready the last part of the tools you're going to need for today's video, and that is an external drive. You're going to need to have an external drive either as a network drive like a NAS uh, mapped as a network drive or utilizing an external USB drive. If you are going to use the NAS side of things, do make sure that you have a mapped network drive already set up. Use the Synology Assistant tool. Right click on the NAS, click Map Drive, log in to the NAS, and then find the folder that you want to map. Map it as a drive. So if I wanted to map the home folder, click Next, give it a drive letter, say V and then click next. After that, if you were clicking finish here, it would map this network drive in your My Computer folder. So if we look here, scroll down, there is that folder we've just created, the V drive. And the reason we're connecting an external drive, in my case, a USB drive here, is because when you're creating a clone of a machine in a virtual equivalent to a physical computer, you can't export that onto the computer itself that would cause an infinity loop you have to make sure that the image you're creating the virtual computer clone of your physical computer is being created on a different destination it's worth mentioning however that if you use a mapped network drive it will take significantly longer and it already takes up to a day in some cases to clone a vm uh, using VMware vCenter converter onto a USB drive. So you can probably times that by at least five to put it on a remote mapped drive unless you're using 10 GBE. So how do we create our virtual machine? Well, for now, the quickest, quickest and easiest way is to go to convert machine. From there, click that this machine is powered on and it's this local machine, not a remote machine. From there, after that, click next. It will then do a quick scan and then invite you to select what kind of version of VMware you want to use. My advice to you is to keep everything by default. Keep everything as the VMware workstation to work on a VMware virtual machine. Name the file wherever you want to name it. 
and then select where you want it to go to. In this case, I'm using an external drive that was E. But if you want to use that map to network drive, you can find it here at the bottom. Click OK. And then after that, click Next. It will then ask you, uh, oh no, wait, because I've already created one in preparation for this video. Click Next. And then from there, it will double check that everything you're doing is correct. It will mention the memory and how that's a concern, and it will allow you to change the values of this virtual machine. So in this case, the 16 gig on my local PC can then be scaled down to something a bit more appropriate. Although do remember, this will of course affect the performance of your virtual machine compared with the physical alternative. After that, click next, and from here you can click finish, and then it will start to create the virtual VMware copy of your physical machine. This will take a great length of time. You can certainly ignore where it says one hours and three minutes because it will take substantially longer than this than, uh, than that time to create this virtual machine. Once this virtual machine is created, we need to upload it to the Synology NAS. So from this directory where it's living, we then need to make our way into the Synology NAS and then upload the file into the Synology File Station Manager. Now, this is still going to be operating in the background, but just to save time, I've already created this file in advance. So once this file is created, upload it to the NAS as I've done here. If we scroll down, we can find the file that I've created. It will be a VMDK or a VMX file. If you go to this folder, as what VMware Converter will create, you can find the files that I created in advance of this video back on the 20th. We've got these files, so now we've got them uploaded onto the NAS. From here, make your way into the Virtual Machine Manager. Right now, I've got this virtual machine running. So let's shut this VM down for now, so I can show you exactly how I converted the virtual image into a virtual machine. Make your way to the tab that says Image. From Image, you need to go to the Disk Image option and add a file. From here, click Add. Go to, up to the Synology NAS or upload directly, though I recommend using the file that we've put on the Synology NAS. And then from there, find the destination of this file. From here, we go into the desktop folder we created earlier and find that VMDK file. Click there and click Select. As you can see, it's already found the file I've named earlier, so we need to rename this. From here, we click Next. We then say where on the NAS we want it to live. This is the default directory that I've created, and bear in mind it has to be an SHR. And from there, click Apply. It will now start transferring that VMDK file into this virtual disk image for our virtual machine. And this will happen in the background while it creates it. But I've already prepared one in advance for us here. Once you've created that image, you need to make your way over to the virtual machine option. You're not going to have this option here that says test. What you're going to have is the need to create your VM for the first time double checking that's recording. So instead of clicking create to create one from scratch, we need to go to the drop down menu and select import because import will allow us to access the image we've just created. From here, select the option import from disk images and then click next. From here, we then have to select the uh, default directory and how much CPU and resources we want to dedicate to this VM. For now, we're going to say two cores and two gig of memory. We're going to name it test two, click next, and we have to select the virtual disk that we are creating. Remember, I've created this one in advance, but your disk will be named different. Click there, and virtual disk one has now been established. We then select the VM network, click next, and from here, make sure we select additional setup options. Make sure that you've downloaded, as Synology will automatically prompt you, the guest tool, as this will help to establish any drivers that you need for your virtual machine.
Stick it inside the additional ISO file or the predominant ISO file, whichever best suits you. Double check keyboard options and more, and then when you're confident you're ready to go ahead, click next. Say which users are going to be able to access this virtual machine on your NAS, but remember that if multiple users access the same virtual machine, they will all access the same virtual machine at once. They won't have their own individual instance. And that's it. The virtual machine creation and import tool is here. We then click apply and then it will start creating that VM. This will take a great deal of time and will use up a lot of system resources. So I've been sure to create one in advance for us here in the background. This will be the result of the created VM that we've gone ahead and made. Now do bear in mind that you cannot cancel the creation of these disk images in mid process. The result is that we may see a dip in performance in the latter stages of the video while we deploy our VM. But for now, let's action the virtual machine we've created. Over here, we click to action and then over to power on. Click power on to turn on our virtual machine within the NAS. And from here, the device will boot up like its physical equivalent. And from here, we just need to click connect and it will open a new tab for us to view the VM in our web browser. As we can see, it's now booting my VM for the first time. There may be the odd hiccup the first time you run the VM as when you're running it, it will tend to double check the drivers and highlight that this is not the same system that it started with. Let's full screen this and take a good look at this VM. I'm gonna fast forward to the full um, uh, deployment of this VM now. This may take up to five to 10 minutes depending on the hardware differences between the virtual machine and your physical machine. And there you have it, our virtual machine has been created. Once again, there is going to be a performance dip between the machine that we are using before and this virtual equivalent. If we go into some of the preset settings and options, we'll be able to see that this is indeed still the same VM. However, in the case of this VM being the physical equivalent, obviously a lot of the hardware has changed. And we will notice that the CPU and memory options will have differed greatly. So if we go into the system properties option one last time, we'll be able to zoom in a little quicker and take a good look at what the configuration options have now become on this new virtual machine equivalent of the physical computer. As we can see, it's still listing as an i7, even though we aren't using an i7 processor. On top of that, we can see that only two gig of memory is readily available. Such inconsistencies like this will happen, and largely this is the result of the virtual machine trying to make the patches between the physical machine and the virtual one. I hope you found this video helpful. I've done a whole series of videos on virtual machines, and I hope this one has helped you guys deploy your VMs for the very first time. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, click like. If you wanna learn more about other ways to create virtual machines on different NAS platforms, do let me know and click subscribe. And otherwise, I will see you next time.